This is Dr. White Coleman for CyberSight. This is a mature cataract in a patient with coexisting glaucoma. We'll make our paracentesis about a half a millimeter anterior to the limbus. Sugar cane, which I use in every one. We can use the same cannula to draw air, fill the anterior chamber with air prior to using tripan blue to stain the capsule. We'll burp out with our viscoelastic, the remaining tripan blue to get a good view. I like to puncture the capsule with my keratone to create a very definite point to begin my capsule rexus. On these dense cataracts, we have to make sure that it doesn't tear out. A lot of times it has a tendency to. This one seems to be fairly well controlled. And I made it a slight bit larger than I normally would in preparation to use the MyLube. I think that helps bring a dense lens into the anterior chamber slightly easier. Some people say do not hydrodissect a mature cataract, but I think it is safe. If you use very low pressure and very low volume, it's a low flow situation. If you create high pressure, you are at risk of blowing out the posterior capsule before the nucleus is removed. So if you're going to do it, do it carefully. But I do think it helps get the lasso around the lens when you use the my loop. I like to place the my loop with the loop facing left. It's more natural to me being right handed. You can see the black mark on the my loop, and that's about where you need to place it in the wound to get the uh, correct placement around the lens without shifting the lens and stretching zonules. I rotate slightly beyond where I'd like the wire to be straight down and then come back. We have to hold the lens down with our second instrument as the my loop cuts through the nucleus to keep it from pulling into the anterior chamber. You can see we got a clean slice of a very dense cataract. And we completely Pull the loop in to remove it from the eye. Here we're in procedure two on the centurion for a divide and conquer. I use essentially the same technique of breaking the lens into a quadrant, whether I groove it with the FACO or whether I crack it in half with the my loop. You can see we break off what is almost a perfect quarter. I believe this is the most efficient way that I have found to remove the nucleus in a real consistent way, whether it's a dense lens or whether it's a very soft lens. We'll bring the second quadrant up into the anterior chamber and actually break it into a slightly smaller piece since the lens is extremely dense. It's important to note here that you still have a hemi-nucleus in the capsule bag that's protecting the posterior capsule. So it's not particularly important to hold your second instrument deep. That gets progressively more important as you remove more of the nucleus and there's less to hold the capsule back from touching the phaco tip. Now we have a hemi-nucleus remaining. We'll bring it into the anterior chamber. Use the conner and the phaco tip to crack it into even quarters, as even as possible. Now's the time that we have to start have to think about protecting deep with the conner wand. Connor is my second instrument of choice, but whatever you have, make sure it's something not sharp at this point so that you can hold the capsule back and very efficiently FACO without worrying about it coming forward. You can see this is a very dense lens. Even with the MyLube, the CDE is getting up around 16 before the case is done. You can safely say that without the MyLube, it would be in the 20s at least. I believe the MyLube probably takes about five off of your CDE uh, on any given case with a very dense lens. As usual in this case, with a dense cataract, there's not hardly any cortex remaining. We'd be real gentle with removing it, as sometimes the posterior capsule is brittle. It can be more prone to rupture when a nucleus is that dense. Injected a little probis through the paracentesis wound to make sure that there were no remaining fragments there. If they were, I'd rather find them now rather than when I hydrate the wound at the end of the case. Now that the lens is inserted, we'll place it in the bag, get ready for intraoperative gonioscopy. We'll plate the anterior chamber with some more provisc, try to open up the space at the uh, anterior chamber angle with the provisc. Get good visualization with the gonio prism. I love the ingenuity, particularly for these cases, because visualization with the anterior chamber angle is uh, basically unparalleled. I've never gotten a better view than I do with the ingenuity. This is the Omni device for goniotomy canaloplasty. It's important to point up slightly, but not too much. 
because we want this to get in Slim's canal and not dive posteriorly into the suprachoidal space. We like to visualize it by passing through Slim's canal just below the TM. Now we'll rotate the omni to the other direction in preparation for 180 degree goniotomy. At this point, there's no viscoelastic left in the cannula, and we'll fully extend it and then pull it back through the trabecular meshwork to perform 180 degree, approximately a 180 degree goniotomy. Remove the viscoelastic. I always go behind the lens by sliding it over slightly. You can see even that little tiny fragment of a very thin, a dense nucleus doesn't come out well with the INA. So we have to be careful to get as much of it as we can prior to INA. Hydrate, check wounds, beautiful case. The patient did very well.